Hello everybody, welcome to another Making Monday Lovable video. Today's video, I call it Truth and Artistic or Creative Freedom. And there's a very specific reason um, uh, that I want to share my thoughts with you on that topic. So last year, um, I had one of the clients that I worked with, um, we did a cover together. So we met several times, discussed the topic, the way the coverage should look, color scheme, all the things. In the end, we were super happy about what we came up with, the whole design and the look, and the journal accepted that cover. So we were extra happy, of course, because that's always um, a risk that the journal doesn't accept an artwork for a cover. And this year they published it and uh, we we're all happy on all sides. Um, and like one or two weeks ago, by accident, I stumbled upon a conversation on one of the social media platforms I'm on where this cover was discussed um, and the discussion thread was not very nice, let's say, in a polite way, was not very, was deemed and supposed to be somehow respectful, um, but in parts it wasn't. Um, it was questioning that cover and a certain thing that was displayed. Uh, and I was questioned, and the fact that I have a PhD in plant physiology was questioned. How dare I depicting something in that way, with that degree? And in all that conversation, I wasn't tagged once, so I had no idea it was occurring. It was really by accident that I came across this. And I read through it, uh, and uh, as it was in another language, I couldn't understand all of it, but there is this, you know, translate. Um, buttons that one can click. So I, I actually, my feeling after while reading that conversation, I, I smiled a lot and I, I thought like, wow, this is crazy. It never happened to me that I get this type of, um, you know, reaction about something that I do. And while I really like to discuss and talk and get feedback and uh, constructively criticize and improve something. Um, that was not the case there because I wasn't once asked. My feedback uh, wasn't um, sought after. And none, of, none of it. It was completely disconnected actually. Um, and there was this group of people that were um, talking and discussing that topic. And I thought like I won't engage because I, again, I wasn't asked. It was kind of going behind my back and that's not something I want to engage with. I don't particularly like that. I think that's not very transparent and that's not very decent when it comes from a perspective of interacting with other humans. And and um, we had a discussion um, with the editorial office of, of, of the journal and with the author as well. And I, I notified him just so he knows about this. Um, and it was very respectful and we all said we're fine on the on the same page and one of the things that was criticized is that there is something that was displayed that's not true that is wrong that's scientifically incorrect so what is the truth actually i guess with many of us we can we can agree that there are certain types of truth that are just there, they are factual, like there's gravity on Earth. We are floating around on this ball that we call Earth in the universe with other planets. We have the sun, it gives us energy. We have like, there is, there are certain things that we know, just like I know, okay, I'm a woman with blonde hair. If somebody tries to convince me that I have green hair, I would say, no, I don't have green hair. That is wrong. It's factually wrong because <laughs> I have blonde hair. So still, there are certain things that are true and not true. And some of them are easy to prove, others not so much. So science, um, is trying to prove certain things and reveal truths. There's this other type of truth, like for example, I grew up in my life thinking that I'm disorganized and I'm totally a chaos and a mess. And that was my internal truth, that I thought this is what I am and how I am. What people observing me from the outside, job coaches, friends, anybody, they would never have thought that I'm a mess and I'm unstructured and, um, you know, um, completely, uh, yeah, disorganized. So their truth was very different from mine. So these type of emotional beliefs and thoughts that can be turned into truths somehow, I, I managed to release myself from that fake truth and 
I do not believe that anymore. So for me, that's not a truth anymore. But there is different types of levels of truth, I guess. But as a scientist, like that's what I wanted to do as a scientist, to find answers to questions. Things that are not known, I wanted to find what is known and what is the truth about this tiny little protein, for example. And most of the scientists that I know want to do that. I haven't actually met a single scientist that doesn't want to find the truth about their own topic or subtopic or whatever they are researching. Um, it has been like this in my career and also with the people that I work with. So scientists want that. And in that case of the cover, I discussed a lot with, uh, with my client uh, and they are the experts um, because those scientists, they do their science, they find the answers and they come to me and they want me to depict it, to visualize it their truth that they found. So we always get, it's a back and forth. I'm not an expert in the field, so I trust the person knows exactly what they have done, what they wanted to do, what they will want, will do in the future and how they want it to be depicted. So in that case with my client, we discussed several options, more complex one. And then we realized, okay, nobody will understand. We have to simplify this. And in the end, we discussed a certain setup, a certain color scheme and everybody agreed and the cover was accepted. And um, so it was criticized that there was something on the cover that is actually not true. And we were not asked, how did we come about doing it in that way? And the thing is, depending on the illustration that you do, you can be very detailed, really complex, and dis display what you know, what is true. And when you don't know something, you put in question mark there. Okay, that we don't know. We want to find out in our, in the next five years, if we get the grant, for example. Um, and that counts for publication or grant illustration, for example. When it comes to cover art, it is a very different aim uh, for this type of illustrations. It's on the cover. It's impossible to actually know all the things that are done in the research for years and years in one cover picture. And the aim of the cover is to uh, make people engage with it, think, oh, this looks great, this is cool, I want to find out about it, and then read the actual scientific paper. Um, it is, the aim is to attract people. And therefore, sometimes there's a need to simplify, otherwise we lose a potential audience. So that's what we've done. We deliberately simplified certain aspects of that cover just for the sake to not lose people and to not overcomplicate things. And yeah, there's where this type of artistic freedom and creative freedom comes in because um, it's fine to do that. Um, the same as if you would illustrate something for kids. It's impossible to put out all the details. The kids will lose the point of what they actually should learn. So there is a certain wiggle room that we have when we do illustrations. And it's always super essential and important to be aware about it as a scientific illustrator and as a client as well. And as a scientific illustrator, to make sure that your client knows that too. There will always be people in the world that will not like what we do, what I do, but there will be people that like it. So, and that's okay. That's the way it just is. But there is this, this responsibility and, um, and knowing that and being able to stand behind, okay, this is what I've done for a certain reason and not get dragged down by people that, for example, don't like it and trash it and question your ability, your knowledge and your degrees. Like in my case, there is no reason for that. Um, so yeah, this is what I basically wanted um, to share with you today. And yeah, also everything that I depict, um, you know, mm, For example, I don't know, a chloroplast is green, I can depict it green, a mitochondrium is maybe red, but a nucleus, it's sometimes purple, sometimes orange for people, and I depict it the way they want it. Is it true or not? Do I spread fake science or not? Not really. So there's always a certain degree of what even we show as a scientific illustration. How true is it? Even if we think we know it. So yeah, that's all for today. I wish you a great Monday and a nice week and talk to you next week. Bye bye.